Welcome to iLecture Online. The most prominent features on the surface of the planet are probably the polar caps. Yes, indeed, just like the Earth, Mars has a northern and a southern polar cap. And the polar cap, at least the northern one, was probably first seen by Huggins through his telescope because on one of his drawings, when he tried to draw the feature, the basic small feature that he could tell on the surface of the planet, he also drew something at the very northern edge indicating that he saw something there that looked different and yes indeed that was the northern polar cap that he saw back in 1600s so as the telescopes got to be bigger and better we saw more and more of those polar caps and eventually we sent satellites up there early in the 1960s to take up to take photographs and part of those photographs were of those polar caps where we could clearly see that yes it had a northern and a southern polar cap but since they discovered that the atmosphere was primarily carbon dioxide and they knew how cold it got there in the wintertime, they assumed that the polar caps were simply made out of carbon dioxide and probably had very little, if any, water ice in them. But were they wrong? As we sent better satellites up there as the years went by with uh, instruments and techniques to be able to peer through the top layer of the carbon dioxide down below, below and on the sides of the canyon walls of the ice sheets that were there, they began to realize that no, it actually did have quite a bit of water ice in them, and now we know that they're primarily made out of water ice. So the thought that we need to go to Mars to look for water, and evidence that there was water on the surface of Mars once upon a time, there's so much evidence, including the enormous quantities of ice water ice at the both polar caps that there's no question that there was a lot of ice in the early history of Mars or a lot of water in the early history of Mars. So let's take a look here at this little drawing. Notice because of the enormous tilt more than 25 degrees from the vertical you can see that both the northern the northern polar cap is completely shielded from the sunlight in the winter time and the southern polar cap is completely shielded from the sun in the winter time in the sun hemisphere winter of course and because of that it gets bitter cold at the surface of the northern sun at the surface of the polar caps at the northern southern hemisphere now it is true that during the northern hemisphere winter the planet is close to the sun it is at perihelion and therefore the seasons the winter is shorter and milder when the northern hemisphere has its winter and they are longer and colder when the Southern Hemisphere has its winter, and it does make a difference in what happens during the winter time. Now, notice in the Northern Hemisphere, this is uh, where Northern Hemisphere, uh, the the um, ice cap is about 420 kilometers across, and that's the permanent portion of the ice cap. It is mostly water ice, and it is about two kilometers thick, which is more than a mile thick. There's an enormous amount of ice there. It's estimated to contain about 1.6 million cubic kilometers of ice, which means that it's about half the size of the Greenland ice sheet. It is absolutely enormous in size. Now, in the winter time, it grows from a diameter of about 420 kilometers to a diameter of about 3,000 kilometers because in the winter time, because it gets so cold at the northern hemisphere, at cold, uh, temperatures below 80 degrees below zero Celsius, the the carbon dioxide in the atmosphere will solidify and rain down as slight snowflakes onto the surface and build up a layer of carbon dioxide of uh, carbon dioxide ice that will cover the northern hemisphere with about one meter of ice to a diameter of about 3,000 kilometers. The same kind of thing happens in the southern hemisphere. It starts out with a permanent ice cap about 350 kilometers across, which is more than 200 miles, a thickness of about three kilometers, which is almost two miles thick, even though it's a little smaller in area, it is thicker and therefore it contains about the same amount. I don't know if I wrote that down, but the Southern Hemisphere also contains about 1.6 million kilometers of ice. So combined, that's 3.2 million kilometers or cubic kilometers of ice in both northern and southern polar caps. So there's a vast quantity of water ice contained in those caps. Now, it also grows to much larger size because of the winter time. It snows carbon dioxide out in the atmosphere. It turns out when the southern hemisphere has its winter, quite a bit of the atmosphere actually disappears out of the atmosphere and snows down as a nice layer about one meter thick across the southern polar cap, probably a little bit more than one meter because the winter takes longer and it gets colder there. 
And so the, var the variation in the, in the atmospheric pressure is enormous between winter, spring, fall, and summer because of the changes in the amount of atmospheric carbon dioxide versus the amount of carbon dioxide that is, that is frozen as a, sh as a layer of carbon dioxide ice across the polar caps. Now, in addition to the permanent water ice that's on the southern polar cap, we also have about an 8 meter permanent thick layer of carbon dioxide on top of that ice as well. The reason why it remains there is because the southern hemisphere is colder in general than the northern hemisphere and because of that it still has a much thicker layer of carbon dioxide ice which is permanent. Now it is pockmarked with holes and we'll talk more about that later in a different, different uh, video but it does appear that slowly that thick 8 meter thick layer of carbon dioxide appears to be slowly disappearing. Of course it's going to take a long time and uh, we'll talk a little bit more about that. But you can tell from this that there's an enormous amount of water ice in the polar caps. Both of them contain water ice which was a, it's a new thing we didn't realize that before. They both get covered with large quantities of carbon dioxide ice. When it gets cold, it simply snows down and covers it, and it becomes much larger in diameter. Then, of course, as the springtime and the summer comes, it re-evaporates, actually sublimates back into the atmospheric carbon dioxide. So it goes back and forth like that over time. We can actually measure those differences of the density and the, uh, the amount of carbon dioxide and the amount of atmosphere around Mars. So that's the polar caps, and we'll Go take a look at, we'll take a look in a little bit more detail about what actually happens at both, both polar caps and the kind of influence on the climate that they have because besides having this enormous amount of ice, they also influence the atmospheric climate that exists on Mars as well. So stay tuned and we'll show you more about that. So you said the carbon dioxide is disappearing. Is it just disappearing completely into space? So the carbon dioxide, that thick eight meter layer appears to be slowly disappearing from the southern polar cap. Of course, when it sublimates, it goes into the atmosphere, it doesn't go into space, so it becomes part of the atmosphere. So the atmosphere is essentially being fed a little bit of additional carbon dioxide, and if this continues, you would expect more carbon dioxide to be in the atmosphere, or more atmospheric pressure in the atmosphere of Mars. But there's very little atmosphere. There's very little. And a significant portion of it ends up on the polar caps every winter time, which is also interesting. And we'll do a video on how we can calculate that. But probably as much as 30% of the atmosphere ends up on the southern polar cap during the southern winter. So there's not much oxygen there? Virtually none. So don't expect to go on vacation there without a spacesuit. <laughs> Ah, uh, that's a good question. What would happen if all of the ice were to melt on the polar cap? And it would then, of course, exist in liquid water around the planet, which, of course, can't exist. It would begin to boil off. But if you could, each polar cap would uh, mean they could cover the entire planet with 11 meters of water, which is about 36 feet of water. That's a lot. That's a lot of water. Imagine, yeah, so if, if it was a, a flat surface that you build houses on top, all the houses would be completely covered with water over the entire surface of the planet. 36 feet of water. Yeah, there's a lot of ice in those two polar caps. Water ice. Now, how much um, is there a comparable lake of that volume? How big would it be compared to a lake? Um, like a Lake uh, Superior, for example? Yeah. I believe, I believe it would have way more water than Lake Superior. Many Lake Superiors. Many Lake Superiors. Yeah, that's an interesting question. I'll, I'll have to go and calculate that. How many Lake Superiors you could fill with uh, the uh, ice in the polar caps? How about all of the lakes? <laughs> all the great lakes? I would have to go find that. That's a good question. Yep. <laughs>